We have just been through the season of Lent and the celebration of Easter Sunday. Easter is the greatest of all the high holy days of the Christian faith. Without Easter, there would be no Advent, no Christmas, no church. It was the good news of the resurrection that was the exclamation point behind the claims that Jesus of Nazareth was, in fact, the Messiah of God. Now we are in a season called Easter Tide, an ongoing 50-day festival of what the empty tomb meant to and for us all. However, prior to the resurrection, there was also a cross. Before Jesus was raised from the dead, he first had to die. And during that excruciating experience, the reality of grief set in for all those who loved him, his mother, brothers and sisters, disciples and friends. If we live long enough, we all experience what they experienced, the loss of someone who meant more than life to us. And when that occurs, there are at least five basic stages of grief through which all persons must travel. For the next five weeks together on Soul Purpose, I want to briefly think about those stages with you. The first is called shock. It is also sometimes referred to as denial, the terrible, oh no, this can't be happening moment when one first learns of the death of someone else who occupied a significant place in your life. It's the basic, simple feeling that the world cannot be the same anymore. Something is missing. Uh, more correctly put, someone is missing who is irreplaceable in your life. How many times have you heard someone say in reflecting upon their own experience of grief, it felt like a bad dream and I kept thinking I would wake up and it would all be over. That statement simply means that in the initial stages of loss, their mind was not quite yet ready to adapt to reality. Shock is, in fact, a gift in those early moments. It's like something of an automobile bumper that absorbs some of the initial impact during a collision. A friend of mine lost her husband in a tragic accident several years ago. A period of a few days elapsed before she was able to view the body. First, it rested with the medical examiner and the morgue and then with the morticians at the funeral home. She said that during those few days, it was as if there had been a ghastly mistake, as if the front door would open and her husband would come home. When at last she viewed his body in the casket, as she put it, reality began to creep in. She told me that those brief few days between his death and her viewing the body were something of a cushion for her, a time to slowly process the information of losing someone with whom she had hoped to grow old. What I remember most from what she told me were her words. It only became real when I saw his body. Following the loss of a loved one, initially it simply does not seem real. Even when we have witnessed someone make the journey through a long and debilitating illness, and in their case, death is merciful, when the final moment comes, it still does not seem real, at least at first. We call that the shock phase of the grief cycle. And as noted, it is a gift to us psychologically. It helps us, as was the case with that woman whose husband died, to slowly process the information of losing someone whom we loved. And throughout that time, as David put it, we do not face our pain alone. In Psalm 23, the shepherd king reminded us, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Initially, following a primary loss, the information impacting us does not seem real, with one exception, and that is this, a reality we can always count on, however deep the grief or pain, is the loving presence of God with us as we process our loss. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
Think about these two questions. First, can you remember a time of personal loss and what the initial moment felt like when you were told someone dear had died? Describe those feelings. Second, how did your faith assist you in the initial processing of that news? I'll see you next week for part two of our study on the five stages of grief when our topic will be anger.